Okay, so here we are in section 5.3 in which we're going to be discussing inverse functions. Um, so two things. One, we're going to discuss another way in which you are able to verify whether or not a function has an inverse. And then two, if you know a function has an inverse, we're going to be able to calculate derivatives for those inverse functions. Okay, so for this video, we're just going to be looking at how to determine whether or not a function has an inverse or not. Okay, so we have a couple of theorems in this section. Um, the first one says that a function has an inverse if and only if it is one-to-one. -one. Okay, so you already knew that. If you have a one-to-one -one function, that tells us that you do have an inverse, and then vice versa. If you have an inverse, then that function is one-to-one. -one. And remember, for one-to-one, -one, that is when um, your function will pass both the horizontal and the vertical line test. Okay, um, theorem two says if f is strictly monotonic on its domain, then it is one-to-one -one and therefore has an inverse. Okay, so um, our definition for a monotonic function is that a monotonic function is just a function that is always increasing or always decreasing. So that means that on a particular interval, f prime will always be positive or f prime will always be negative. Um, and that would imply that a function has, it is monotonic, which means it does have an inverse and it is one-to-one. -one. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples here. These are in your notes handouts. It says that if a function is monotonic, then the function is one-to-one -one and therefore has an inverse. So we're supposed to determine whether the following functions have an inverse. Okay, so we're just going to use our um, property that, or our theorem that just says if our function is monotonic, then yes, it is one-to-one, -one, and yes, it does have an inverse. So that means in order to do this, we can just find the derivative for each of these and test the derivative to see if it is always positive or always negative. And if yes, then that means that our function does have an inverse, okay, rather than trying to go and actually find the inverse. Okay, so for example, number one, we have f of x is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 1. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get a derivative. So f prime is equal to 2x plus 8. And we'll go ahead and set the derivative equal to 0. And when we do that, we get that x is equal to negative 4. Okay, so then we want to test this critical number, x equals negative 4. We want to test f prime, and we want to see what is the sign for f prime. So if we plug in numbers smaller than negative 4, so for example, negative 5 in for f of x, we get a negative number. But then when we plug in numbers larger than negative 4, so like 0 in for f prime, we get a positive number. Okay, so here this derivative tells us that our um, our derivative sign changes from a negative to positive, which implies that we have a turn in the graph. Um, so that means that it's not monotonic, it's not one-to-one, -one, so there is no inverse function. So not monotonic. Not one-to-one. no inverse. This is all because f prime changes signs. Now, if they wanted to restrict the domain, so for example, if they said on the interval from uh, negative 4 to infinity, does this function have an inverse? Well, there we would be able to answer yes, because the derivative would be positive for all of those values. But on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, no, there is not an inverse function. Okay, example two, we have f of x is equal to 2x plus sine of x. Okay, so same question. We want to know, does this function have an inverse? So we're going to go ahead and take a derivative. So f prime here will be 2 plus cosine x. And when you look at the function of 2 plus cosine x, um, you don't even necessarily have to find a 
um, critical number or do any kind of sign chart business because if you just look at cosine of x, you know those values are going to alternate between negative 1 and 1. And if you add 2 to that, that whole graph has now been shifted above the x-axis. So this is greater than 0 for all x. And so that means that, yes, we would have an inverse. So yes, monotonic. which means one-to-one, one, which means has an inverse. And this is because f prime of x is greater than zero for all x. Okay, example three. Okay, same question. We have f of x is equal to x over x plus 1, and we want to know whether or not um, this is a monotonic function, therefore 1 to 1 and having an inverse. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take the derivative. So using the quotient rule, we need the derivative of x times x plus 1 minus x times the derivative of x plus 1 all over x plus 1 quantity squared. And this will just simplify to 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared. Okay, so the only critical numbers for this derivative is when x is equal to negative 1, coming from the denominator. So when we test x is equal to negative 1 into f prime, uh, if we plug in numbers to the left of negative 1, so like a negative 2, plug that into our derivative function, we get a positive value. If we plug in numbers larger than negative 1 into our derivative function, so for example 0, we get another positive value. So our derivative goes positive, positive. It's always a positive uh, function value for our derivative, so this is another yes. So yes, it's monotonic. So that means it's one to one, which means there's an inverse. Because f prime of x is greater than zero for all x. Okay, so um, that's it for the monotonic functions. Uh, the next video then you'll be learning how to take derivatives of inverse functions. So we'll see you then.